Africa's most populous nation is facing a big problem. Not just one problem, diverse problems. Insecurity, inflation, recession, and others. All right, by Standard at Nistens on Flip TV with Michael. Really appreciate you viewers for always joining us on this platform. We say a big thank you to you. All right, we have something tragic on the front page of the Daily Sun newspaper. Of course, it's um, Wednesday, March 30th, that's the 31st, 2021. We have a tragic story here. The massacre in Ebony State. Massacre in Ebony State. Scores killed. Many injured. Houses burnt as a Governor Umai. On to the next one. The major story on the front page of this. Journal: War against bandits. Kidnappers. Buari to security chiefs. Go after sponsors of insecurity. Buari to security chiefs. Go after sponsors of insecurity. Lawan denies back in Tenoa elongation for President Momodu Buari. And down the paper we have on uh, the order of the president to the uh, service chiefs says criminals dictating peace will no longer be tolerated. We are concerned about happenings in Nigeria, says United Kingdom. Government kill Catholic priests, abduct Catholic uh, wife, four others in Benue, Cardinal. Igbo president. Southeast should start cutting other zones, says uh, a Yibo. Farmers, elders clash. 33 trillion Nera livestock sector under threat, says minister. Expresses fierce impasse will lead to milk, meat scarcity. And the story will be reading lastly to you viewers. We are ready for comprehensive uh, national census says npc we are ready for comprehensive national census says npc we have mr matthew ready to do justice to what we have on the front page of this journal good morning to you mr matthew how are you doing i'm fine You're welcome once again. all right we have a tragic story today and this is very very disappointing just like what the governor of that uh, state, Ebony State, has said it's unacceptable and this is disgusting, as uh, said by me. Very, very disgusting. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mike, for having me. Matu is the name. It is not just sufficient to say it's unacceptable. I think it goes by the name of the Chief Secretary Officer of the state. He should live up to that responsibility. Because this attitude of the governors not speaking out a situation where your citizens have been murdered because the way it stands even if you do not have that capacity you do not have the command and control of the police of the army and any other security uh, agency for that matter i think it is high time they start speaking up so that they put pressure on the federal government to give them that leverage to start commanding the police the army in their domain because until they do that to the army, to the police, a situation where the order is not yielding any results. I think that order, it is a lip service order. Why am I saying so? Look at the revelation that came from Shai Gumi. He had visited bandits in their hideout, severally, with Pretoria evidence, with video evidence. So I think their location is not a challenge. If an individual can visit them, have meeting with them, deliberate with them, come back to give the government feedback, then their location is not a challenge. What is a challenge is the willingness of the government to combat them. And I don't think we are lacking the level of armament, armament to combat them. Because it was with a swift reaction that federal government deployed air raids to allow the other time. So what happened to, our, uh, to all the various I mean, all our helicopter war um, platforms to those locations where these headers think all the governors at this point should come together and speak one voice. If, I, if for any reason you are not creating state police, then restructure the constitution in such a way that the commissioner of police will be as the chief logistic officer. It looks logical. It looks reasonable. But the question is, who do you do you want?
want to sacrifice those people in captivity, I don't think it's the best approach. We are seen in this country where a young girl who worked with a Red Cross, a nurse, was kidnapped by Boko Haram. And Boko Haram contacted the government through all their uh, numerous counterpoints, demanding for about two billion naira. Federal government insisted that they are not paying that ransom because it will encourage kidnapping. At the end of the day, Boko Haram killed that girl to set example that they were serious. That this government refused to listen to the uh, message of negotiation, that they would need to listen to the message of blood. And I think Kaduna State government would have learned from that experience. Because if you are insisting you are not negotiating, you should be able to protect your people. You should be able to put enough measures in place, in place to avert kidnapping. Not a situation where your citizens have been kidnapped already. You are insisting you are not paying ransom. I think if Arifai's son or daughter is in captivity, he will not be speaking in this, in this manner. So what I'm saying is, let the Kaduna State government, in collaboration with federal government, go and negotiate and get those citizens released. After they secure their release, you can go about your kinetic approach. The governor of Zambra State is known for kinetic approach. I'm not saying they should be negotiating with them. But a situation where you already have um, about 100 persons in, cap in captivity, the best thing to do, I don't think I'm, an American government will abandon their citizens and on, on the altar of we don't want to negotiate. Then again, I think the federal government should drive the process of fight against insurgency, against kidnapping, against banditry through technology. I have seen the statement that came from the High Commissioner of uh, Britain to Nigeria that they are concerned about the plethora of incidents in Nigeria. He mentioned the instability in the in the in the south south as a result of that, that is the activity of the people who vandalize isolation. He mentioned the secession in the southeast. He mentioned banditry in the northwest. He mentioned the uh, insurgency in the northeast. He mentioned kidnapping in the north central. So you see that it's all over. And he says it's a thing of concern to them. So what we are saying is let the government drive the process through technology. Technology is the way to go. These days, you can have a drone that can move from here to Ikeja. It, it takes aerial photograph and you would analyze it. You know where the enemy, uh, where the enemies are, the time they are coming for attack, and things like that. So what we are saying is, the federal government, one, for me, they are not serious. Because if they are serious, Gumi know the location of the bandits. He should lead them if they don't know the location. Secondly, they should collaborate with our international partners. We are saying before 2015 election, the then government of Jonathan had the hard mercenaries to put Boko Haram out of the major uh, uh, towns in the in the in the northeast. And election was held virtually in every strata of that state. Now it is evident that Nigerian government do not have the capacity to combat this plethora of challenges. The rival thing to do is to get your hand on deck, get these experts from the best of nations. America will be ready to help us. Britain will be ready, re ready to help us. Israel will be ready to help us. Why don't you leverage on that relationship and get the experts to uh, fight this uh, help us come out of these challenges? We saw how America came to even Nigerian soil to rescue that 27-year-old uh, Philip Wanting who was kidnapped by kidnappers in Nigeria and taken to Nigeria. So you see that they have that level of expertise. Yeah. I've never seen any successful operation by Nigerian security agencies in that manner. So what we are saying is, what do not arrive, do not arise to the occasion to ensure that they bring those security uh, personnel to justice. Now, away from that, uh, let's move to uh, a story here. Uh, Lawan denies nice parking tenor elongation for President Mamadou Buhari. I, I did, this is not uh, a true story anyway, but uh, there are speculations outside that uh, uh, Buhari might you know, kind of want to elongate his tenor. Uh, when you look at it uh, during Jonathan's time, I think that that kind of uh, story too came up, that kind of issue came up, and at the end of the day it was scrapped out. How possible uh, do you think this would be this time around? The truth is, Buhari have lost popularity tremendously. 
the good way he came into government which he has squandered it. So, if it's nothing that um, ambition or intention of turning elongation through constitutional amendment is unfortunate. But again, look at that Africans and their mentality in governance when they are in of authority. It is very difficult to say an African will not be interested in turning elongation when, opportunity, when such opportunity is provided. They can even create such opportunity. We are seeing in diverse places in Africa where leaders stay put. That is why a person like Jonathan has that integrity and has earned himself respect globally. Though he lost an election, but the way and manner he considered his speech and handed over speak volume of a Democrat. But they, now, I do not have all the details and I do not believe and I will advise Mr. President if it is nothing, nothing such intention, such ambition, he should jettison it. Because, one, he has lost popularity. Two, it is against all the known tenets of the Constitution. Three, it will throw the country into class, into crisis. Four, age is not on his side. People are worried that the, his age is, is helping to bring about uh, reluctancy or rather is stampeding stampe uh, governance or bringing, or bringing and development the in the country. So somebody who, who is that age, at, uh, who has attained that age, should be thanking God, giving glory to God, and should be relaxing and retire to his home. Not jumping up, just like uh, Joe Biden, who is saying that he wants to contest again in 2024. All these I don't know what is their problem. You have youth who have the energy, who are the way we are, who are the who are technocrats, who have managerial and the award a Nigerian physician won the best doctor award in America for 2020. So you see that what we, what we are suffering here is bad is bad leadership. And here we have a, a system that is not working. It's not working as we as, as we speak. The doctors, resident doctors, are threatening to go on strike by tomorrow. Yes, tomorrow is the first day of the month. Yeah. Yes. So if all if the government do not do the needful. Don't be surprised by tomorrow, you see resident doctors and back on strike. What is the problem of this government? Not just this government, what is the problem of Nigerian government? Their problem is that they are egocentric. They are self-centered. They only there for their pecuniary interests. Because I have not seen a situation where any money that is meant for House of Rep members, senators, the presidency, I have not seen any situation in life in Nigeria where such money is not released. It's often released even ahead of time. And when you go through the expenses, you see that they expend all the money even in areas where it's not supposed to be recited. Go and check security, security vote of any governor or the president of any executive. They make sure they release security vote from, from to the least amount. And at the end of the day, this money is expended, it's not recited for. And it runs into millions of naira and billions of naira, as the case may be, whether at the level of the presidency or the, other, uh, or the level of, the, uh, of governors. So what I'm saying is, they are egocentric. They respond when it comes to their own uh, interests. But look at health sector. That is supposed to be a major sector in an economy, in, in a country, that deals with the health challenges. Look at how vulnerable they are when it comes to this pandemic. Look at the hazard they are exposed to. How can you tell me that the fund, fund is a, funding is a problem? It's not supposed to be. All right, thank you so much. Thank, thank you so very much. much. Really appreciate it's it. it. All right, Raphael, good morning. Now, Michael, good morning, Jerry. How are you doing? I'm good fine. Morning, Welcome once more. It's yes, I've come edition. once again. Yeah, very nice edition. And you know me that I don't pet the truth and I don't beg anybody sure. to help me in saying the truth. Mm -hmm. Truth is one thing I know that can heal open wound. Do you understand? And the conscience as well. Our conscience can heal wounds as well. Because you see, Easter is 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 a is a very you know uh, uh, critical Easter in the sense that uh, nothing, nothing in this Easter, Michael, go and price things in the market. Nothing. Nobody have anything to use for Easter. I don't know whether you have. It is biting hard. Harder and harder on Nigeria because of the inflation of the, because of inflation of of the, the country, price, of inflation of the price, the situation of the country in generality. Warrant that this sister is only by the grace of God. We don't have anything, nothing. If every skyrocketed, so I'm telling you, I don't know what we're gonna do in this sister. It's a very, very 
dry Easter. Unlike the one we used to have. Have before, where we are just celebrating and enjoy ourselves. This time around, we have nothing to enjoy. I can remember the use this. A month to Easter. We will be jubilating and everywhere, every what is it in Europe? Medical tourism took over 900 and something billion every year. They could not put in benefiting a lot. Immense benefiting. They are benefiting immensely from Nigeria, you know, on that sector of, uh, you know, medicine. Nobody wants to put our medical health care system in order here in Nigeria. All they do is Europe, Europe, every day, Europe. Each time they have health challenge, they, they will run to Europe. Look at the old president. Is he not ashamed of himself? So, Michael, this is that is overburated, man. It's too dry. All right, it's well. It's, it's well. very, Craft very health. bad. Very Craft bad. Very it's bad. Well. It's well. Very bad. God will provide. All Amen. right, quickly to another story here. Yeah, it seems that UK is concerned about what is going on in Nigeria. Uh, cited uh, insecurity, cited uh, secession, and other problems we have been faced with. Uh, I don't want it to look like uh, UK is just uh, talking. Can there be uh, a proactive measures to tackle, you know, to tackling all these issues we have been faced with? Yes, you know, we can solve the problem ourselves. Michael, it lies within us. We are the one that can sort it out. If we keep on waiting for the UK, the British man to come here and solve the problem, the British man will wait in and destroy it the more. Mike, I have my reasons. United Kingdom is benefiting from what is happening in Nigeria. I'm telling you, look at what is happening in the Southeast. Look at what is happening in the Northeast. Look at what's happening in the corners, North Central. Are they not our colonial, so-called colonial masters? What are they doing? Is Nigeria not one of their colonies again? So this is a question that has posed unanswered for a very long time. Because, let me tell you, UK has never come out to solve the issue, the problem of our factors, militating insurgency in the North East, Eastern Nigeria. Is it because Nigerian government has not allowed them? No, Buhari has been crying all along, two weeks. Last week, he said, please help us solve a climatic uh, issue. Please help us solve terrorism and the banditry issue. Do you understand? He has been crying. Is it, is it France that will come in or United States? They, they, they are not our to receive Nigerian uh, general, so-called general, who claim to be a president. So that the, from the parking space, they will be making their money on daily basis. Now that Buhari has gone there, Buhari will stay there like two weeks. The parking space. Yes, it's money. That is what UK is all about. They will be very happy to receive us. Stealing, loot, the money we embezzle from the government, they will be happy to re receive it. They are the ones that are the recipients. Do you understand? So, they are receiving loot from Nigeria, but in the UK over there, embezzle 100 pounds. No, as a government worker or someone that works in the public place in the UK, embezzle 100 pounds. That date I quoted that day, do you think I just quoted it? In 1898, Henry, why Henry, maybe in the House of Parliament or in one of the government departments, embezzled 854 pounds. And the man was jailed 105 years in the UK. I'm not quoting it all in the name of quoting. And I quote again, they are giving us to slavery, selling us over to Fulani. Eh? While in 1807, Britain passed it in the House of Parliament that there should be no slavery anymore. Everybody are equal. So they're they are, they are selling that indirect. Thank you. Indirect. So let me adjust the quote to my date. 1833, William Weber Force in the United States, they started war against slavery. So UK, United Kingdom, Britain, the British, they are evil. They cannot come here to prove a solution. They can only stay, sit back, benefit, enjoy the loot. They have the benefit of insurgency. They have the benefit of milking our oil. They have the benefit of being beneficiary of looted money. Treasury bill in Nigeria, the, the UK, they receive it. They are receiving points. No, Mike, don't you know, have you forgotten what David Cameron said in 2015? 
Nigeria is fantastically corrupt. It's an English. Fantastically. I'm telling you, corrupt. Quoted. Debated for over two weeks. They shout, British, idiot. Then the camera. Are you calling him idiot? Are they not the recipient? He, more, he knows Nigeria more than you. He knows the embezzlers more than you and I. So why are they shouting and talking at him? Those Nigerians that are calling them idiots. Are you what's up? You are abusing him. Remember that David Cameron resided, I think, in 2014. Then Theresa May come in. I think understand. Because of Brexit, David Cameron just left at the age of 46. Every young British nothing to celebrate this Raphael, Is it gonna be a another, can we move to another? Let's move forward, for, for, forward, man. Let's progress. All right. Michael, serve, serve a boy state governor rights. South, South, Ebony, Ebony, indigenous is in Africa. The biggest mosque in Nigeria is in Africa. Where is Africa? Ebony state. So there have been less. Umayyad should go towards that process, medical process. Let us see his DNA. DNA. If he's a truly an Igbo man, you know, make this issue brought of losing, this. brought about this, that something lives lost. Nigeria army. They were, they were deployed to southeastern Nigeria to protect the herdsmen from the attack, from the attack, from attack from the ESN. They protected the herdsmen so that the Igbo community would be very, very, uh, what do you call it, uh, prone to attack or susceptible to attack of the Fulani men. Do you understand? They are protecting the Fulani herdsmen. Into, thank you, attacking the Boma. Pampering them. Pampering them, I'm telling you. Mm. No, I'm telling you. Iboma in Enugu, in Eboy, are now vulnerable to Fulani attack because Nigerian soldiers have given them full protection against the security outfit formed by Iboma to protect their farmers and their locals. in the farm land, in the farm camp. That is what is happening. It is trending now in Igbo land. So, see what happened. They protected them. So these guys came in as, you know, reciprocal attack to retaliate what happened. Because, you know, say, they evacuated them. Yes, How many months ago? Yes, they yes, evacuated the flag and said, go, go, go. So they now came back. They amputated many. They decapitated many. They, they, they killed many. They, they come out, they remove many, their stomach. Do you understand? With this kind of knife, you know, curved knives they use, they got out eyes, they killed many. Yeah. If you listen to Igbo version of BBC, my brother, if you are hearing Igbo, you see, and they show it live. It's not, pro it's not propaganda or propaganda. They show it live, the whole world watched it, witnessed it. Nigerian soldiers are the ones protecting them. I'm telling you, that's why Igbo man in that axis are now vulnerable to Hesman attack. With no one to protect them, only God Almighty, who is in heaven. I'm telling you, Michael, we give that credit to Nigerian soldiers, Nigerian military. We give that credit to the police. And don't you think they protect Fulani Hesmen in the I, southeast? And this time around, I don't you think they to commit they, that kind of that, that act with impunity? Mm -hmm. Because they are the people in the authority. What do you think a common man can do? <laughs> Oga, let me tell you, Oga, uh, uh, Mike, listen, listen, Michael, you know, it's it, it, uh, uh, to mock upside down anytime Eastern governors are being mentioned in this platform. No, 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 no. Those people, those people spoiled more than five day old moi moi. Not moi moi that you just warm every morning. Moi Moi, you left that Moi Moi not on the freeze, on the fridge, on the freezer. I think you know, without any cooling effect or preservative, Moi Moi you just left like that on the table. They spoil more than that. Five day old Moi Moi, the whole Eastern governors, Michael, they are dancing to the tunes of this Fulani man, as a rock, because they want to be president comes 2023. All they do is every month, in the name of security votes, in the name of kowtowing to them, they'll be going to the north, kowtowing to all these Fulani people, kneeling down, bowing down to them. 
That is their work. Because they have enslaved, enslaved themselves. They have enslaved them, you know, their, their dignities. They have sold their dignities to the full animal. They have sold their birthright to uh, Buhari. All right, thank you so much, Raphael. So the North, the Southeastern governors, they are the people behind our wars. All right, thank you Terrible so wars in thank the Southeastern so Nigeria. I really appreciate you for talking. Thank you so much. Much. Thank you so much, Rafael. All right, Sunday. Good morning to you. Good morning, Mr. Mike. You're welcome. How are you doing? I'm fine. I want to take concerning the uh, tragic event that took place in Ebony State. That's mine again. Good morning, everyone. You know, if you remember when I come back that time that I travel, I told you what I saw on that road. It's a terrible something because you see soldier, army, Nigerian army, escorting cow. I said it. People that hear me, that know me, that, that remember what I said that time, they will know what I said. Because when I reach that place, when I reach Ebony State, from that boundary, from Ebony to Cross River State, you understand? They have a boundary. When you look at that place, that Ebony place, there is, you see where Kawo full road, we are in that road almost 30 minutes. I was telling those people inside that motor, say, Ami was bring a charing traffic on the road and the cow, they fool all the whole they walk. I tell you, those people walk hand to hand, cross the and the state. You know, but because of that political distance, because they cross the on is AP, PDP, they are born your own. Now have become to wear APC. That's where the problem start from. But that one no concern me. The, the governor, the people that are still following the governor. They know that they have sold themselves to who? To Hesman. That's why Hesman had power. Before, when this man, uh, David Mai, was in PDP, Hesman never had any power to attack a boy in state. But he has, he has joined APC, he has signed himself to the Flani leaders. Every Q. You know, shock the whole Yoruba people will say, first time, Tinubu, what the whole Yoruba people in Kanu state? You don't know. He they are doing campaign. Tinubu says he's almost 69 years. Why Charlie bought 71 years? And we are still here deceiving ourselves. Why are they reducing redu their, their age? Because they don't want to die. They don't want to leave the power. They want to keep on occupy that power until further notice. That's why Charlie Boy says something here. The way I, I was just laughing. He said, he said, a boy and a youth cannot work in the same lane. So how would there be comparing two of them waiting with Tinubu? Say Tinubu is a boy. If Tinubu say he's almost 60 something years and him is now 69 years and Charlie boy is 71 years and people never come out to ask and they are target now. Why he holds that thing? He holds the color queen in a Kanu state is because he is campaigning. Why he not go Sabisa for and go campaign? May, may the Nigeria know they like Nigeria. You understand that if they know they like Nigeria, they should go to Sabisa for it and do the color for there. We should stop the cinema ourselves. Last, uh, last uh, during COVID-19, Nigeria invests almost how many billion into health system. But you know that uh, nothing is working. That is why the president had to run away. And it will shock the whole Nigeria when the president will come back to Nigeria. It may be 2023. That is why he refused to hand over, and the people fighting for him is carried by Shewa and Adeshino. Those are the people speaking for him. Adeshino said the president is going for a, he said the president who is going for a medical. We know when he tell us. The president tell us last time he traveled, say he is coming back in two weeks time. That two weeks go to six months. But this one, upon all the security crisis, nothing is moving in Nigeria. No food to eat for poor masses. Okay? The president leave the country without no handover to anybody. The country now is without a leader. You understand? He leave the place and I remember four months ago that those uh, senators, the fake robust town senator we have in Nigeria, they were telling us that they will, they will bring a bid that will stop the president from flying out for treatment. But now, what has happened to the bill? Nothing has been done. The president now has run away. The country is in... in, in. Now, man, go like anything. You know, concern me. He was telling that if, if 
think they are actually going to those people that are fighting for the good of Nigeria. Nigeria is not working. The system has spoiled. The people as ravaging poverty. Look at what they said today. They said the scarcity of food, the increased amount of food is causing hardship in Nigeria. But the government is not doing anything about it. What they will tell us that they borrow money. Amechi is saying that they borrow two point something billion naira from China again. New world, they borrow it. What did they use it for? This is only Nigeria. This only country I see that they borrow money. They collect a bunch of loot. They collect money for doing exercises. What they will tell at that time during exercises that uh, Abi uh, COVID-19, the secretary Abi uh, uh, finance finance office have caught fire. The paper lost. They don't know how to spend the money. The money for a batch, a batch of loot that they sent from different country to Nigeria. Where is the money? Recover loot. They recover in Nigeria. He could eat. He could eat. Uh, Abi, uh, he could eat get money. They recover. Uh, uh, Dazuki money. Uh, other money they recover in, in pit. Where is the money? They share it with it themselves. That is why they want to hand over power to people that want to wreck Nigeria again. Tinubu and all of them sit down that day. They were sitting down, said that in Tinubu colloquy for what? Tinubu, we don't want old people again. Because where the thing is going on like that, we don't have the people that can talk. You understand? Our leader are just yes, sleeping, nothing is moving. All right, quickly. You understand? Let's, let's quickly move to the live chat. We have here. Kule, you're welcome. Yeah, thank you very much. Good morning. Good morning, how are you doing? Uh, happy to see you again. Yeah, good to see you. Yeah. Uh, with security, insecurity all the time. Yesterday, uh, the president, through uh, the national security advisor, President of Kabanjana, said uh, that the service chiefs should go after the bandits and the sponsors, fish them out. Citizen of Nigeria should should be able to know that that one is workable. So it's not a news to me, okay. right? Because when you are seen where you know Mokre or Okre, what's it called? People are when I was castigating him for just waking up from the slumber. Now, I mean, yesterday, yeah, under his government, there was a general from Bayesa. You remember Aziza, General Aziza, that got blown up in a aircraft with uh, Yakoa. And uh, Yakoa supposed to be the first Christian governor in, uh, what's it called, Kaduna. So that guy went to a, 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 a what's it called, a, a, a meeting in Delta State, that's uh, Niger Delta and stuff. And he said it point blank that Mr. President, that was the previous administration, right? Jonathan administration, that Mr. President, the Boko Haram you are looking for, they are in your cabinet. I think people are just short of my memory. Now, what I just trying to emphasize on that. He's the president himself. He even said as a then. As a then. Yeah, he said he had so, to say so, that. So, and we have people, youth, that, that are youth that we believe they are representing the youth in that government. They could not press that issue. They could not raise that issue up. They could not, I mean, agitate on that issue to be, the, the people to be brought to book. You get what I'm saying? So, it's not today that that is happening. We have sponsor that, that, that feeds on this territorialism in this country. We have sponsor Because I'm so shocked with the kind of people we think we have now. You know, I was backlash yesterday on social media that I'm talking of, uh, you know, Mokre, Mokre is fighting for the youth. It's not fighting for me. You that you are watching, if you saw we are here, we are here. We are with the one witnessing the thing. Once you have wine and dine with any government in Nigeria, you cannot be trusted by me and people that are of righteous, you know, mind. I respect Shawore Damokwe because I know the, I know I know where Shawore started from. I know all the punishment. I he was nearly killed in Unilad due to that he's fighting for the right thing to be, you know, done. So I yeah, I know people that I can appreciate that they are fighting for the youth. I'm sending this message back. They are not paying us here for us to talk. We are risking our life. I'm risking my life to talk here. So anybody that backlash my statement should go back to archive or go back and think. Right? Now, you see the Boko Haram, the bandit tree, they know these politicians, they know themselves. We've seen a statement from someone that said he's going to make the government of Susu Pesci ungovernable if he lose the election. And that same today, they will rubbish him because the Kaba are already there sitting down waiting for the you know the next president you bring. 
on us, the next president is being sawing like this. They do what? They hijack him. They cage him up. They frame him up. That is what is happening there. You see this man called Buhari? He's not in charge. Of. I'm telling you, the president we believe we have is not in charge. He has cabals too. They are cabals. There must be cabals. These are same cabals now that they, they will shift from the, you know, the, the, the uh, power mongers that are ruling. Now, deal with the masses again. They are the ones dictating. Either your refinery will work or not. They are the ones behind. They are the ones, you know, doing all this. How do we get rid of the cabals? How do we get rid of the cabals? That is the, if the youth, this youth you are seeing here now, part of us here, if you are ready to take the bull by the horn, right? But I don't think so, because they've infiltrated us through tribe, through uh, religions, through, you know, it's going to be serious. Through politics. Through politics. I will tell you, I'm someone, both PDP, both APC, I've tried the two of them. I voted for the previous guy, the first time he was safe, that he had no shoe. Well, okay, Jonathan, yeah, yeah, I voted for him. I had that sympathy because I believe I belong to the, the common people of this country. So he came up, he had no shoe, he had no this thing. But when he got there, what happened? The cabal hijacked him. The story changed. The story changed. And we have people that served under him, likewise, that could not nip this thing on the bog, man. And, you know, I'm still going back to Reno. These are the face. Well, he, and he's, if he's an activist, he should have been fishing out all these things when he was in government. I think he was chief press secretary. He was a spokesman of a person of the, the last administration. Yes, if the, that administration had done the needful, we would not be in this mess we are today. Let the truth be told. I don't know any one of them. They say I'm talking about Tinubu. I'm just that yesterday we don't want any diversionary. Forget it, Tinubu. You are making Tinubu more relevant. Let's eat the nail on the head. What we are facing now is beyond one single man now. You're talking of Kaba. The Kaba are faceless. Let us go and occupy that hospital for him to be sent back to Nigeria. Because we have nowhere to run to. They mess up the elders, chieftains. They go any headache, they travel out on, at the expense of we masses. Our common wealth money is what they're using. So it's we need to organize ourselves as youths and take the power we give to them back. We can do it. Right, as Obama you. said, yes, you can. Yes, we can. All right, thank, thank you, you very so much. much. Chigoze, why are you frowning? It seems you are boiling inside you. Since you are born in inside you. What's the problem? They are looking unhappy. Well, that is a misconception. I'm cool and I'm good. Okay. It's just that I've been on drugs for barely two weeks now. I'm trying to recover it, so, okay, sorry. so I'm taking it very calm. Right, get so how is it? Get well soon. Yeah, I'm getting better. Now, so security what do you have issues. To do? Uh, security issues not getting better in Nigeria. We've seen the president come out several times to talk about this. Yesterday, uh, he told the NSC that about Ghana, you know, you know, that the service chiefs should go out there to kill the bandits and their sponsors. Sometimes they go, he ordered that uh, the security personnel should kill anybody carrying AK-47. These are statements that have been coming out of the mouth of the president and still we are still finding ourselves in this kind of mess. What is the problem? Is it, the, is it that the president doesn't have that capacity to command and control the military? How else can we fight insurgency in Nigeria? And how else can we bring these perpetrators to book? Yes, I must start by quoting uh, Winston Churchill. He said, you make a life by what you give. Hmm. You make a life by what you give. Yes, you make a life by what you give. So we can't run away from the truth. Irrespective of the fact that we have been living in denial over the decades, that we don't have a system first, and uh, 
most importantly, people like you, I mean, I don't mean you, Nigerian journalists have failed uh, the Nigerian people. In their reportage, they have not been honest and they don't report uh, sensitive issues. Activists who pretend to have been with the people, but when he had the opportunity, uh, you can see how he's misbehaving and uh, standing against the people. You see, every man can withstand adversity, but if you want to test the true character of a man, you give him power. You understand the true character of a man. So that is just what has been playing out. You can recall that uh, before 2015, how uh, the so-called uh, Buhari has been running around, crying, making empty promises. Uh, but now, his true disposition or character is now before the public domain. We understood him better now. And people who have been living in denial could now agree with me that this man is uh, uh, nepotic person personified. So, with such person, according to, of course, uh, uh, Donald's MC Galoni said that leadership is action, not position. But the reverse is the case here in Nigeria. We only aspire to occupy leadership positions so that we can max wealth, not because we intend to serve the people, not because we intend to serve humanity. That is the problem of Nigeria. The problem of Nigeria is not the security architecture. It is leadership. We don't have leadership in this country. What we have is managers, and very bad managers indeed. Manager. Yeah, we have managers who take a, a arbitrary decision without consulting or part on their own citizen. So you can't claim to be a leader while you are working alone. Hmm? You are taking an arbitrary decision. Look at the, the rate of, the level of hardship. I mean, no, no, no not want to talk about that. It's biting hard on the people. And it's quite unfortunate, and you still maintain we have a leadership. The first security is one, the security of stomach infrastructure, life, shelter and state of emergency. You can see the deficit in even in building. Most people, I, I wonder the kind of uh, return we found ourselves. I wonder if God is, if Nigeria wants to continue in the state of nepotism, if Nigeria wants to stop the frustrated the Igbos from participating in the electionary process, is it the man you can trust the leadership of this country? I mean, we are heading for something more worse than what we are in today. It's quite unfortunate. And these people could not leave power willingly, except you force it on them. That's why I'm calling for revolution, mental revolution, on the part of everyone, most especially the youths. Unfortunately, with the enormous resources at their disposal, they have almost bought over the youths. They have the best snipers, they have the best hire killers, they have the best propagandists. They have almost bought, of course, even the media, they have the way with that. So for me, we are heading for something more worse. The only way possible, if we must chart the way forward, is disintegration. Let each region, of course, they will not allow true federalism to strive because it will be to their own disadvantage. They have made Nigeria so ungovernable so that they will continue to take undue advantage of the system, which is quite unfortunate. Thank you very much, esteemed viewers. I wish you happy Easter in advance. All right, thank you so much. Very brilliant one from Chigose. <clears throat> David, you're welcome. Good morning, Mr. Michael. Here. Michael All right, good morning. David Samson. It's always good to be here. All right, still on the state of the nation, talking about the security. 
after the president's statement yesterday, we still have a massacre in Bono State. How do you think we can get out of this mess? This is this is becoming unbearable. Mr. Michael, they could have me. Let me chip in something. Okay. I was going through the comment section. One Mrs. Georgina. One Mrs. Georgina said that, that she said Mr. Kule has lost weight. So now I want to retreat that now. Miss Georgina, everybody in Nigeria has lost weight. It's not easy to live in Nigeria. For you to live in Nigeria and be what? LD, it takes only the grace of God. Because most persons in this country eat in the morning, skip lunch, and eat at night again. So everybody knows what's happening. So if you see him losing weight, it is not his fault. It's not because he's not taking good care of himself. It's just because of the state of the nation. And it's because of inflation. It's because inflation. of the inflation and the price of commodities. Commodity. It's okay. okay. He bought it. <laughs> I bought it. After. <laughs> And thank God he didn't have the money to buy it. I was going to Oshodi yesterday. Along, 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 like a, along. Some women accosted me. Elderly woman. She was like, my son, I have no eating. Please help me. I was like, I'm going to have 1,000 now. Okay, madam, take 200. When I boarded bus, where? When I got to Oshodi, I was headed towards Mushi. A woman boarded the bus. The conductor wanted, the man said she doesn't have money. And the driver was trying to chase Duma out of the motor. I was I felt pity for Duma. Okay mama, how much is Mushi? Mushi that was supposed to be under Nera from, from that portion to which is under Nera now it's not two hundred now. I have to pay for me and Duma four hundred. Just, so things are just happening. So back to the question. Um, uh, still on the massacre in the uh, airport state, that, like I said earlier, on, the president often, uh, regularly you know, has been coming out to talk on insecurity. Most times he orders uh, the security chiefs, uh, the service chiefs, you know, to flush out criminals, kill bandits, uh, do this to insurgents and other. But uh, we don't see any tangible results. Thank you, Mr. Michael. I will start by saying story for the gods. He has been saying this often and often and often. He even met the service chiefs yesterday, the, before I left for London. He met the service chiefs yesterday and still no tangible results. He does not get any proof. Now, the same government that met with the service chiefs yesterday, the presidency in court met with Sheikh, Sheikh Gumi. Now, he will be the one that, will, that would facilitate the redeem members that were that are, that, that are on Saturday. So what are we saying? Now he has been what appointed as the to negotiate, to negotiate on behalf of the government for the redeem members. So what are we now saying? Ole mole, ole mole, So Mr. his own his own his own actions, his own words doesn't sound meaning to anybody now. He like let the president convince up his chief now. He knows how to get them out of it. He, why? Okay, fine. If truly he trusts the Nigerian military, why would he still meet with Sheikh Gumi to go and facilitate the world? Has lost hope in himself. Even Buhari has lost hope in himself. Mr. Makarikule, security, nothing is nothing is working. Proof. So so let him go. Come and go. Let him go. At least he should have handed the eh? Hospitalized. Will you still feel pity for him? You like, ah, let him go, come and go. Since you are the one catching for like 90% in London, let let everybody living in London contribute to your own quota by go by tripping out to the streets just to be. Let them pay him. Not we. we because I don't want to find myself to the UK. Because what does it take them to fix our healthcare center? Mm -hmm. It's a disgrace. It's a, it's it's a disgrace. disgrace. Very I very took one one grandma to last suit yesterday. Last suit. There was no chair for us to sit down. They were like, come today, come tomorrow. I had to I had to bring her back again today. And what does it take? It's just resources and the political will to do all this. It doesn't it does it doesn't take the government anything right. just to fix our health as we said. But these people just don't want to do it. Right. And then these people are the true devils. Devils. Right. Two devils. Thank you so much, David. Really appreciate you. Quickly, Mr. Devils. Right. Two devils. Thank you so much, David. Really appreciate you. Quickly, Mr. Lucky. Yeah, good morning. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, time is against us. Just yeah, really. Duty, yes. All right. Now, Land up. Have worry to security shifts. Go after sponsors of insecurity. 
Your take. This was said by. Uh, 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 I don't know. Anytime Buhari say go to go attack insecurity, that is where insecurity will be worse. Like the one I just saw, the massacre in Ebony. I don't understand me. Anytime you make that statement, I don't believe he's the one making that statement. That is a Garba show. No, true, true. Uh, security advisor. Uh, that is it. Uh, but I'm not here for him. So anytime they make that statement, that's why you see more massacre or more killing, more kidnapping. So I told you, that President, let's work on 2023. I look for a president that can be able to address address his family before the Nigeria. Why are they not supposed to be a chairman of law? Fortunately that Tunubu went and brought him for where he lying on the bed or farm. So where all that talk doesn't mean anything. If you like talk from here to tomorrow, we only have two years to go. From now, no the police have started. Look for young guys that will take over and make Nigeria great. That's what I want. My own make Nigeria great. All right, thank you, thank so you very much. much. Thank you All right. So much. All right, thank you so much. All right, here we say goodbye to you on today's edition of this program. Join us next time. It's a platform. Michael Adekule remains my name. Behind the camera, Michael Ojo. You can join us on our social media handles. You can join me on Facebook at Michael Temitayo. I really appreciate you viewers. And special appreciation to the CEO of Flip TV, Abiyodu Kupului. Bye, everyone.